I'm going to tell you something that might seem pretty obvious, but if you truly understand what this means, it might make you a lot of money in your life. So here it is. The initial public offering, or IPO, is dying. Now, this is no secret. The traditional IPO has been dying a slow death for years, decades even. But if you follow news about stocks, and specifically IPOs, it doesn't seem that way, right? Because whenever we see an IPO begin trading on the stock market, the price pops. And this is known as the IPO pop, and it's quite the event. You know, it gets people tweeting, gives people FOMO, and it's exciting. There's money to be made. And most importantly for the banks, it makes their clients richer. I imagine they celebrate this massive wealth arbitrage with champagne showers while never actually asking if they did anything to deserve the millions of dollars that were showered upon them. And you know, the banks intentionally designed for this to happen. And that's why the IPO has been dying. The banks and in their infinite greed have built themselves a golden throne on the backs of those who risk their time, their capital, and their labor to build and launch and go public with these companies or risk their hard-earned capital to back them. So I want you to realize this unneeded wealth transfer that comes straight out of the pockets of the employees, the founders, and the investors. Because that IPO pop that you hear is actually money going out of your pocket and into the hands of the bank's best brokerage clients. And this arbitrage by the banks is very much daylight robbery of the very companies that go public. It's legalized theft. And yet, despite how terrible IPOs are, despite how draconian this process is, and despite how much scrutiny is involved with becoming a public company, we still see companies publicly list on major stock exchanges because of the insane amount of capital that it comes with. That IPO pop is so central to the culture of the stock market that it's literally a major plot point of the Wolf of Wall Street. So even though IPOs are terrible, we still put up with them because it's the only way for a company to seek public investment, right? Well, let me introduce you to the SPAC. And now don't get caught up by the weird sounding acronym. Instead, when you hear or read SPAC, train your brain to translate it as IPO 2.0 and you'll have an easier time. As a technology investor, you need to get familiar with SPACs. Why? Well, simply for two reasons. First, SPACs allow companies to go public earlier. And second, SPACs allow access to higher risk, higher reward opportunities than what's out there today. So if you compare a SPAC IPO to a traditional IPO, it's really a no-brainer. And it's no wonder that some of the hottest stocks that you've probably heard about this year, including Nikola Motors, DraftKings, and Virgin Galactic, all went the route of the SPAC IPO. And that's not a coincidence, as compared to the traditional IPO, the emerging SPAC IPO provides an alternative route to going public that is simpler, quicker, more secure, and they're cheaper too. A recent article from the Wall Street Journal helps explain why SPACs are really starting to catch fire with companies looking to go public. With a traditional IPO, a company learns how much capital it's raising only after several months of wrangling with underwriters and investors. It can also fall through at the last minute, especially if markets slide. In comparison, a SPAC deal can take a similar amount of time to complete but the negotiations are simpler and the terms are determined earlier in the process. So this is what I cannot stress enough. The pricing process of traditional IPOs infuriates companies. Not only do they leave money on the table with things like the IPO pop, with traditional IPOs, there are higher standards and it's a longer process. It's just not structured to quickly turn well-hyped businesses into public companies. In contrast to that, the standards for SPACs are lower so anytime there's a well-hyped trend or the possibility of one, a SPAC is the right vehicle for a quick IPO. Simply, SPACs are changing the game and they're perfect for a market that is starving for new places to park capital and willing to take risks on newly public companies that aren't the fundamentally sound and profitable companies that have usually gone through the IPO process. Instead, the SPAC IPO is going to bring companies to the market that resemble Nikola Motors, a company that has no product to speak of and is a year or more away from their first expected delivery. And sure, that's a departure from what the market normally has looked for. But we are certainly not in normal times, are we? In particular, the EV market is getting hot really fast. So Nikola went the SPAC IPO route because if they had planned a normal IPO, they would probably have to schedule it for some time after they had a working product go to market 
rather than just prototypes and hypes. And yeah, its stock performance since going public is the epitome of craziness in a readily crazy market. It certainly feels like crypto in 2017, but crazy market performance aside, let me ask you this. Wouldn't you like to own shares in potentially the next Tesla? Wouldn't you want to be an early investor in a new industry that's looking to have price parity and range parity with existing gas-driven cars within the next two or three years? As batteries get better and as EV cars get cheaper, inevitably we'll see them gain more and more market share. This is a massive paradigm shift in personal transportation, but your ability to bet on that market shift has not been reflected in the public markets. And why is that? Why should you be prevented access from putting down your chips as early as possible when it comes to investing in the future of technology? Why should you have to wait for the banks to let you have that privilege? After all, the pace of technology advancement isn't going to be slowed or wait from approval from crooked bankers. Progress is not obsequious to process. I think this is exemplified best by the CEO of Virgin Galactic who said, for the first time, anyone will have the opportunity to invest in a human spaceflight company that is transforming the market. So at the end of the day, SPACs are the new rocket ships that launch our meme stock dreams. And what's true is that companies that go public via SPAC are usually not ones that planned an IPO for a long time, but ones that had a sudden opportunity and really wanted to take it. You could think of SPACs as the Vegas wedding chapel of liquidity events. Seems like an urgently good idea at the time, but it doesn't always turn out that way. And yeah, even though the investments on some SPACs have an ROI similar to what you could get in the 2017 crypto markets, in general, SPACs are a much riskier proposition than a typical stock. According to SPAC research, 73% of SPACs have lost value after they announced their M&A. So that's why it's so important to do your homework on your investments. And that's why we'll continue covering SPACs tomorrow, especially regarding how you can get involved. But the big thing to know is that SPACs are growing up in a big way this year, and it's changing the market. There are a couple more interesting questions we have still yet to explore. Specifically, what makes some SPACs succeed versus fail? How do SPACs differ from IPOs and direct listings? What's the future of SPACs? And just in general, what are the do's and don'ts of investing and trading SPACs? So hopefully this video has piqued your interest. And I can't wait to share more about SPACs with you and some of the other really exciting trading and investing opportunities that are coming to our attention. And that's why the best way to get the inside edge on these opportunities is to join our free Discord server where we have tons of resources, education, as well as look to join our service to get even more of an inside edge and to trade the markets live with us. So check out those links in the bio below because I can't wait to see you on our Discord and I can't wait to see you in the next video. So thanks for watching, thanks for supporting the channel, and thanks for being awesome. Till the next time, cheers.